So, in your book, The Heretic's Child, who exactly are the Rememberers? The Rememberers are a race of demi-humans. Uh, they were created about 25,000 years ago. There was uh, two tribes and they were fighting over the, a fertile valley that, and um, at the end of the battle there was a woman who had lost her daughter and she went insane with grief and she called upon the powers that be in the universe and um, that her daughter not be forgotten. And as a result of that, the powers that be created this heavy race of humans called Rememberers. And uh, it's, there's uh, two classifications. One is catalogers, and those uh, are the people that collect memories of dying people and place them in the Hall of Memories. And then there's the counselors, and those people go out and they use the information from the people's memory to go out and help counsel human beings. Uh, the leader of the Rememberers is called the Sybil, and she is the one who coordinates the information in the Hall of Memories and the counselors and tries to better the uh, human race. Uh, about 2,000 years ago, uh, things started going a little awry in human history, and that's because somebody is trying to, has been, killing off all of the Sybils. And so the latest Sybil is now coming into the majority, and she has to find out who's been trying to kill her, or she'll become the next fatality. That's interesting. So, in how does religion play a role in your book? Religion plays a role, if I can tell you, it kind of is a spoiler for the book, because it, it started off as a, um, when I was writing the book, one character, Emma, she's the one who's going to become the next Sybil, said to her stepfather, uh, Samuel, uh, has there ever been any rogue rememberers? And he said, oh, the last time there was a rogue rememberer, it created a new religion. So and they, it, that was kind of where, and I heard, it just kind of exploded from there. As I was kind of stuck on the story, so I was writing the backstory, and when the character told that joke, I went, oh, they're a heretic. Heretic? Heretics, she's the heretic's child? Okay, and I just kind of, it just kind of mushroomed from there, so. How does a rememberer become a heretic? I mean, become a uh, rebel? They, they work against uh, bettering the human race. So, so they work, in, so they don't they're, want to help. So what, uh, I, this is another spoiler. Um, the heretic is um, one of the parents of uh, a rememberer. And okay. um, yeah, so it's the ultimate betrayal. I mean, there's, you know, there's, a, uh, let's see, he kills his wife, he kills, he kills both of his children, and he's spending all this time chasing after, because he never, he never quite gets there in time, be, you know, before there's another heir. So he's chasing the Sybils and trying to get rid of the Sybils because he doesn't want the human race to be able to evolve and grow into a peaceful, he's jealous because he's not, or he's not a, uh, he's a cataloger, he's not a counselor, and he wanted to become a counselor, but he's not. So he's basically fighting against his own nature. Okay, so do you think people do that too, fight against their own nature? Oh, all the time. It's just whether, people can fight against their nature it's just whether they accept, they have to accept their nature. You can grow beyond it, but you, if you don't accept what you are, then it's going to turn out badly. And that's what happened to him. He, just, he doesn't accept what he is. He lets the jealousy and the anger eat him up and it basically destroys a lot of lives. What type of genre would you say your book was? It's cross genre. They, they make you classify it, and um, since it has a race of mythical beings, I decided to go to fantasy. But it does have, it has, it has a romance in it, and it has um, suspense, and it also has a thriller because it's like, oh, who's, who's the one who did it? You know, and so there's a little bit of mystery. So it's a cross show. Is it difficult to place your books in a specific genre? Yes because every, they want you to, they, um, they, meaning the publishers, want you to classify it under just one heading, and... Um, 
but a book is always more than just yeah, one word. If you're writing about life, life isn't just one thing. Life has everything in it, so, but yeah, I guess it makes it easier to try to market things. So that's why they make genre. I like your cover. How did you think of this? Um, well, the it, it, it ties into the book. Um, that's Mary and Jesus, and um, Jesus was the one that was the original heretic. Yeah, he created, remember I said the joke was that, you know, the last heretic created a new religion. Well, they were under a false impression. They thought that he was the bad guy. They didn't know his father looked just like him, and because they aged differently, some of the time Jesus looks like he's a pacifist. Other times Jesus gets a little rowdy and throws the money changers out of the temple. Well, the reason is, is because the pacifist was Jesus. The one that wasn't was his father acting as if it was Jesus. So, there, yeah. So when I saw that, I looked at Madonna and Child in the free art, you know, for the, that they gave me for the from Lulu, and I looked for Madonna and Child, and I was going through, and there's you know all the Raphael paintings of you know a mother and an infant, and then I saw that, and that's a statue from uh, I believe South America. And I just liked it because of the, you know, the texture and the color and the shadows. And so. Yeah, it is beautiful. How um, much um, research did you do historically as well as research in religions to create the Heretic Child? Um, I read a lot. I read several books. Um, I can't think of the, book, the name of the book off the top of my head. It was the one that was written. Um, it's the history of Jesus. Um, and not from a religious point of view, but from a historical point of view. And um, so it told about how society operated at that time. And um, then I also went in and the book takes place, it opens up in, um, in Scotland, in the Highlands. And, and during the 1700s, 16 and 1700s, there was um, the English were trying to clear the Highlands. It was, and um, so I incorporated that into, you know, one, one of the destruction of the village. Um, one of the people, he hired the English to come in and they burned the village to the ground because they wanted the land to raise sheep, which ended up being, by the time they finally got the highlands cleared, sheep were no longer a thing. And they were entering into the, you know, the, the revolution, uh, the, uh, the technology or you know the industrial revolution was, was starting so they cleared uh, Scotland was uh, believe it or not at one time used to be one of the high, most highly and most densely populated areas in Great Britain and Europe and you wouldn't know that because they cleared them they, I mean they went in and they raped and pillaged and burned villages to the ground and people left and a lot of people went to Canada and some of them came to the United States and some of them went to England and, and Wales and then also Ireland. And then in Ireland they had the potato famine and then they came here. So yeah, it, I did a lot of research and um, I, it, uh, The Heretic's Child started over 20 years ago. Um, I got this idea of a woman standing in a library and it was from that image everything just kind of rolled from there. And, um, it started out as a science fiction book, but I don't write science fiction. I was going to write science fiction for a boyfriend who wanted a science fiction book. And I went, I just don't write science fiction. I don't understand technology, you know, what, I don't know how to create a world where it's technology based. So about um, six years ago, I started writing the background. I went in and I wrote the Bible where it had the anthology and the genealogy and it, it mapped out 25,000 years worth of women who were the Sibyls and then I came up with a rough outline and I usually write by the seat of my pants as, as uh, Barb calls them pantsers and um, this one I wrote a, a rough outline and I started writing and then I threw the outline out the window and I just <laughs> wrote how I usually write. But um, yeah, it, I, got, I got it done. Uh, I first got the, I, I wrote a couple chapters and it stopped and I didn't have a place to go. And then I wrote the joke 
and then it just kind of then it was like oh I have a bad guy and I have a good guy and I have a I have a place where I know it's gonna go and so I that's when it finally got going and that was May of 2015 and I got it done by September and then uh, took it to Lulu and they worked with me and we got it out by April of 2016. I'm still learning about publishing. How does the heretic's child and any of your writings refe reflect your own personal beliefs? Well, I'm an agnostic. I don't believe in any more organized religion. And so um, I think that's why I was, I was kind of um, able to come up with that joke to begin with. And um, I, I like to think that Humans can't define deities because we're just humans. So I, that's, I, 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 I try to, for some reason, writing doesn't always follow my personal beliefs because there's murder in here and I don't believe in murder, but it's part of life so it, it ends up in the book. But um, yeah, I, I, I try to kind of leave my own beliefs out of things that the story doesn't really have anything to do with me. It has to do with the story. <laughs> Otherwise it wouldn't be telling it to me. It, wherever it comes from wouldn't be telling me. Sorry. I've had stories that write themselves. Um, you mentioned um, earlier when I first met you that you also created some words or vocabulary for your for your world that you, yeah. you built. How difficult was that to keep track of those words, what you thought they meant? as you were writing your story? Well, um, it wasn't hard at all because it just, I mean, in context with the story, I, mean, I, I had a couple of my beta readers tell me that I shouldn't use the word remember because it doesn't flow. And, I, and I, so I tried several other things and I was like, that's just not what they are, you know? So I went back to the remember and um, it's just, I, I, I've never had a tr trouble with that. It's just the words, if the word fits, then it just it isn't hard to understand what it means. So, at least to me. So. What advice would you have for somebody who's trying to write a fantasy novel where they're creating their own society? You have to have rules. Uh, physics rules the universe. Biology rules life. So if you don't have a set of rules that work, you're going to get continuity errors. And continuity, continuity errors just make it so a person isn't going to want to read your story. Because they'll just start getting confused and they'll get frustrated and the reader will just put it down. I'm not saying I'm perfect in that area, but I, I actually am really a stickler for continuity. It has to follow. And um, the sequel, um, is called The Heretic's Lies, and um, it's written from the antagonist's point of view. And um, I'm halfway through the book, and all of a sudden he says something, and I went, and, I'm, and a couple chapters later I went, oh no, oh no, that's not, doesn't follow what's in this book. And so it's like, ah, the brakes go on, and I'm like going, oh gosh, I'm gonna have to go back and, and rewrite, you know, like chapters and I and I'm like going so I took a break and all of a sudden it hit me this guy's a liar he lies about everything he, he and he does it out of spite and out of malice not not just because you know he is you know a pathological liar but he also does it just to make it so people don't feel I mean when somebody tells lies and you know it it makes you very like, clenches at your gut and it just makes people get upset. And so he revels in that. So I went in and I just said, okay, well, that's just one of the lies he told. So I didn't have to go back and rewrite it. <laughs> so it was a little bit lazy, but yeah. So did that answer the question? Okay. Um, how do the rules of the society impact the characters? How does the rules? Well, um, people are born into one class or another and um, like I was saying about you know and he fights against it so that created the whole problem of the, the whole the, the 
the, the whole, it, just the whole problem that started the book. Um, they, uh, you know, the, the, the rememberers don't force their views or their guidance on humans. In fact, they, when they first started, they lived with humans and humans knew about them, but humans tried to raise them to deities and the civil said, no, that's, that's not going to be okay. That's going to make it so you worship us and that's not going to make humans any better. So the, the, the rememberers went underground after that. And um, so the whole thing was is that rememberers wanted to be in the background because their whole purpose was to make things better. And his whole purpose was to defeat that. He wanted not only to kill the civils, he thought by killing the civil that he would um, be able to destroy the human race, that the humans without the guidance of the civils would fall into chaos and they would end up having wars and um, nukes. And so he, that was the whole purpose between be why he would kill the civils is because without the rememberers, they, he felt that humans would just devolve into a massive primordial ooze or something. But um, it just, uh, that's how, that was how everything started, was he wasn't happy with, with his fate, and rather than deal with it, he decided to destroy. What would you have wanted to be in that society? Probably a catalog, because then you hear all the people's stories. I wouldn't want to have to go out and try to make people listen to me, and you know, because to me that would be really hard, is to go out and try to be, work behind the scenes, and know that this is what needs to be done, but not be able to force people, it's like, that would be really hard. So I would want to be a catalog, because I like stories. What's the human society like in your book? Because you keep talking about how the rememberers work, but what about the humans? It, it's exactly the same. As if you go back in history and you look at my book and you look at the historical timeline, they're exactly the same. The only reason, thing that I've come up with is that there's different things that cause these actions to happen, like the like. A, Hitler going into Russia. Well, the antagonist of this story didn't like how Hitler was getting into power because he thought that it would detract from what he was trying to do. So he saw that Napoleon had gone to Russia with his troops and that it had didn't that didn't turn out well. So he encouraged Hitler to go to to you know into Russia because he thought that it would you know, he'd be able to just run over Russia and take over Russia and then that he'd win the war and that he knew that it wouldn't turn out well. So there's there's all these kind of things. And then um, in the second book, I go into, uh, there's an incident with uh, a character that he thought she was the Sybil, but she wasn't. She was just a human, and he ended up get, having her murdered, and he showed up. And it's the only time that you ever hear the antagonist not 